Vault Dwellers, Wastelanders, welcome back to the Fallout Lorecast. This is your host, Tom, or Robots, and I am here with our patrons this week because it is the patron show for November 2021. Welcome, patrons. And I'm going to go through the list. We have three of our patrons this week. Joining us this time is Lil Green. Lil Green is back. Welcome, Lil Green. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. Good to have you. I'm glad you're uh, wrapping up some of your photos. We talked about this uh, in the pre-show. You're wrapping up some work, getting ready for some vacation time. Joining us on the show this week. You ready for vacation? Oh, yes. I'm very ready. It's been a long time in planning. That's good. So, I'm is the most happiest place in the world. <laughs> the happiest place in the world. Nuka Cola. Yes. <laughs> Nuka World. Nuka World. There you go. Well, uh, you're going, you're coming to our version of Nuka World, which is yeah. Uh, I'm going down to Disney. Down to Disney. So, okay. dude, you're coming to my neck of the woods. I hope you enjoy it and have a fun time. I hope the weather's nice for you down here. Uh, chances are, it's going to be beautiful. You're going to have like highs in the 70s at the at the most. Oh, that's perfect. It's going to be being, like glorious. Being a ginger and so pale skinned, the sun and me do not mix. <laughs> yeah. Well, it might still be bright out. You might actually still need to wear like sun lotion of some sort, but it's going to be nice and cool at least duly noted without being like super cold so i think you're gonna enjoy it and then we also have eric joining us again eric well, welcome back how are, uh, how are you doing fantastic actually well that's that's amazing that's great and um for the first time we have kit calavera joining us welcome back or we're not welcome back welcome for the first time <laughs> uh, we were talking a, minute, a few minutes before so it feels like we've already met and we've been talking for a little bit but welcome to the show uh, thanks for having me here. Yeah, I was here the whole time. No one has noticed. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a secret. You've been like hiding in the secret corners of our Discord chat and Zoom yeah. meetings somehow. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm everywhere at this point. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for having me here. Yeah, thanks for supporting uh, the show and for for joining us live. This is always exciting for me to meet new people and talk with you guys for these episodes. And this episode, we're continuing our what ifs because that's the theme that we've been doing lately. And I've got I've got kind of a doozy for you guys because. I've been dreaming up some of these episodes, and if you listen to last week's episode with my wife, we were com coming up with some really silly ones. But I've got some, I've got some what I think are really good mind bendy ones, and the one for this week that I wanted to bring you guys in on because I think this is one that we can all chew on. It's any good what if is something that can take you lots of different places. It starts to tip over some dominoes and then those dominoes tip over other dominoes and they can take you into some other really interesting directions as you start to play out things in your mind. And this one has to do with Fallout 4. And the premise here is what if the Institute was actually helping the Commonwealth? And let me expand on that a little bit. And the Institute thinks they're helping the Commonwealth, right? But what if they were actually forthright and honest what if they weren't sneaking around or stealing things or replacing people what if there weren't all these rumors about synths replacing humans what if they weren't you know shooting people and stealing their babies you know, like these kinds of things what if they were actually morally upstanding a good organization from the beginning and doing things in a very open and forward, like above the ground kind of method in order to help the Commonwealth. How would that make things play out differently in Fallout 4? So that's that's where we're starting here. And of course, with any good what if, this can go in many different directions and it creates other what ifs, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Well, does that mean that this would happen or does it mean that what this would happen? So I'm going to let this kind of start and we're just going to see where this goes. So who would like to take this and, and run with it to begin with? Do any I of you? guess I'll go first. Yeah, go for it, Lil. So the way I did a little thinking about it and I just think like it would be a completely different if we could go on by the like game base, but also just like a different commonwealth mm -hmm. because like you have the technology to build an underground base that is pretty much totally futuristic and have a, the resources for a teleporter, like you wouldn't have the glowing sea. I feel like even like everything would be clean, pristine again. Like so it's just something that like 
there wouldn't be a Fallout 4 in in my eyes because you wouldn't have any radiation. You wouldn't. You might not even have super mutants. You might have raiders, but like everything would be probably rebuilt. Because so you're thinking you like long term, like long term yeah. future that like they they would have taken their technology, distributed it, like put put it forward and cleaned everything up. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about like the entire United States, but at least the area of the Commonwealth okay. definitely would have been like rebuilt and affected, but maybe like slowly creeping across the United States to rebuild. But it's just like also that resource drought that the game and the universe has. Is that still there in an issue? That's right. the only like, I think, stopping factor. OK, well, let's, it. let's take this step by step. So what is what is the first step in making that? actually happen what what are the like what are how do the dominoes fall that create a better commonwealth where they can clean up the radiation get rid of this super mutant problem like they you're right they have a lot of scientific ability they have a lot of technology they have a lot of a lot of knowledge how how do the how what are the steps that they take to make this actually happen I think square one is just building basic infrastructure, just making sure people have places to live and like, you know, your your medical uh, treatment for anybody that needs it. Um, Running water, clean running water, Mm -hmm. stable electricity, and just the basics of society yet again. Mm -hmm. So So does that start with like getting in touch with um, like the just the human, the cities? Yeah, it's just getting... So Diamond City. They reach out to Diamond City and they say... Diamond City. Let's just say they start out with Diamond City and they, you know, spruce that up to make it more of a, like, instead of, like, being ramshacked, like, apartments being, like, actually, like, a structure built off of the stadium. And then just starting from there and just, like, going out in, like, our radius and, like, just redoing everything. Mm -hmm. So how does... So look, this this is great. This is a wonderful conversation. So... How does that work when somebody comes in like a human, like TIE fighter in chat says human humanitarian efforts. So when somebody comes in with a lot more ability to do these things and they say, hey, we want to step in and we want to just give you a lot of help. There are complications that come with that, right? Yes, there is, because it's also who gets it, how much Mm -hmm. and also who's in charge. Right. Because if it's the Institute just giving everything, who's in charge of them? So is the Institute gonna be in charge because they do have all the power and they have all the technology and the resources but do they still have that leadership the good leadership but i I feel like the institute could just become like the new government in a sense if they're just willing to be like okay here's everything because then it's gonna be like you know it's like uh everyone else will be in debt in a sense do you think that do you think that everybody would be willing to give up their freedom for the provided benefits i mean is this in a sense you almost have a a rome situation you have you have a technologically advanced organization coming into a situation where people are in need of infrastructure they're in need of governance they're in need of technology this is like rome showing up and saying we're going to build you bathhouses and aqueducts and we're going to bring you uh in a working economy and a military to help protect you Uh but you're gonna have to pay our taxes and you're gonna have to follow our laws and you're it seems to me and and this is an interesting idea right like it seems to me that you're gonna have a lot of people who are gonna go yes yeah life sucks pretty pretty much i'm gonna yeah if you're gonna bring some military in here protect us from the super mutants give us some clean water and some actual like working electricity then yeah i'm down with that that i'll follow your laws that sounds great but you're also going to have those people. And I mean, uh, this is America, right? You're going to have people who are going to say, hell no, I'm going to make it on my own. I'm not following your laws. I want the freedom to do what I want to do. And I'm just going to make it on my own. Screw you guys. And uh, there's no easy way, at least in my mind, to solve that divide, because you're always going to have some people who are on one side of that and some people who fall on the other. Um, so does that in the long term create a divide between these two groups that in some ways creates more friction do you think that's solvable i I feel like yes that's always going to happen there's always going to be some sort of power struggle or even a power vacuum and so much as wanting to be in charge Mm -hmm. but i feel like if like 
if we're saying the Institute is just like 100 percent for the people like there's no reason for people to be against them yes at first because they're gonna be like oh who, who are you to take over my land my building whatever uh, like peace like, wherever you're living mm-hmm. and like tell me to follow suit but like if there's no downsides to it you're getting the protection you're, yes you might be having to pay some sort of tax in a day and age that you know is using caps sure. but like sure. it's it's just like what is the what is the negative of it? Right. And if if we're saying you know institute good, what, I don't see a negative in it. Right. Well, you're being a hundred percent rational here, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm being rational. <laughs> you're being 100% in a hundred percent rational, rational situa- situation right. and where there are a lot of emotional. A lot of people are going to be very emotional about this. Um, so. Let's open this up to the, the other guys. Eric, uh, Kit, do you have any thoughts on this? Do you think that this would actually work, or do you think that there would be some some struggles here? Like, how do you bring everybody on board with this kind of idea? I was thinking that there would be a mistrustful element amongst the populace because even if people bring positive changes, there's always someone going, what's the catch and kind of, I mean, we see people doing that nowadays too. Yeah. Like this seems too easy. What do they really, what's their goal here? What, what do they really want from us? They would be able to, set up better defenses but there would also be the threats of external conflicts coming from outside such as exterior sources of super mutants or when the brotherhood shows up because that would be a conflict Mm. right yeah so okay that's let's open it up to that so let's say we have a scenario where the institute comes in and they get they get a majority uh let's say they, they even do it democratically let's say they show up and they say hey guys we're here to help out. We've we've been working on our own for a long time. We've solved some of the issues that we know are out here in the world. And we've been doing this in a way that we want to bring about help to the to the Commonwealth. We have some technological advances we want to share with you guys. Here's here are our terms. And they say, well, we need to think about it. and they say, well, tell you what, why don't you guys vote on it? You as a community vote. Here are our terms. This is what we want, but this is the help that we will give you. And whatever those terms are, the community votes on it and a majority says, no, we're down with it. We're, we're cool with it. We want to work with you. We'll go by your terms. Right. And let's just take it that far. And so the community says, OK, we'll work with you. The Institute comes in. They send in their scientists, their engineers. They they bring in some some of their military, some of their synths to help guard the borders. They, they bring in some infrastructure. They start cleaning up the water. They start you know, building up the, and, and so now you have, let's just go with diamond city. You have a diamond city that's now cleaned up and is technologically more advanced and in comes the brotherhood and they fly over diamond city and they see a technologically advanced diamond city. What does the brotherhood think? Mine. Right. Yeah. Cause the brotherhood yeah. thinks, who are these guys? They don't know what they're doing with that technology. We're the ones who should be guarding this technology for the future. And all of a sudden, now you have another power struggle on your hands. What happens then? Kid, what do you think? What do you think would happen here? Start placing bets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, start placing bets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like... Yeah, Brotherhood's all about, you know, taking technology away from, like, the common man and the wasteland and all. Especially with, you know, with Max. He's a little bit power hungry. I don't know the right word for that. Yeah, no, that's something that, along the lines. That sounds yeah. yeah. He seems a little more aggressive towards, you know, the wasteland more than anything else. But once they see, you know, Diamond City becoming more technologically advanced, They'll probably send in, send in the troops and say, you know, hey, what's going on and all that. Probably trying to see uh, who's in charge, who brought in all this technology and all that. Yeah. And then you have the element of the synths. Once the Brotherhood finds out that oh, yeah. a lot of the security and individuals who are potentially working the, the, the farmlands and the security on you know around diamond city are synths aren't actually even real humans the brotherhood Mm -hmm. under maxon in that situation isn't going to be fans of that either (laughs) no i could just see uh, you know lasers and bullets flying once they figure that out because as maxon said they're kind of abominations towards the human race 
Right. Right. And then you have another situation with the um, railroad too. Once they figure that out. Yeah. And so let's say, yeah, let's say um, if they have like Gen 3 cents and now, that's, now they're trying to, you know, trying to help them out thinking, you know, slavery is wrong and all that. Yeah. So that's the other thing is even if they, even if the Institute isn't necessarily replacing people in the Commonwealth, the way that they were in, in fallout four, that still doesn't right. mean that they don't have, um, AI among them that are emergent AI that, that find themselves to be persons and people among, you know, of, of their own volition, people who are self-aware and are coming to their own sense of self and want to be freed of the situation they're in who feel like they're in bondage who feel like they they should be able to make their own decisions and don't want to be enslaved anymore that's a big theme in fallout 4 are these synths who feel like they're actually individuals and that's where the railroad comes in so now you have a diamond city that's almost wholly dependent on the technology of the institute and then you also have gen 3 synths who were designed by the Institute, who still have this issue with wanting to be free from the bondage of the Institute. So you still have an issue with the railroad. Yeah. You have like two groups trying to take down the Institute, you know, one for technology and the other one trying to, you know, quote unquote, free the synths. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So TIE fighter in chat yeah. says, uh, if the Institute is above board, they would confront that issue. No, that's a good question. Do you think that, an above board institute, some an institute run by a, a morally a, a, a leadership that's more likely trying to be morally upstanding would actually address this as a, a legitimate issue. Like, for example, their their lead engineers and scientists come to whoever the leader of the institute is in the situation and they go, we we found some anomalies among the AI that claim that they are now self-aware and they want to be let, let go. They want to be freed. And what would you have us do? Do you think they would set up some tests, some um, the ability to try to determine if these are actually self-aware that they've they've designed technology that is so far advanced that they've now created AI that are almost indistinguishable from human intelligence? I. Mm. I seriously think the synths might be a different situation just because they're not trying to infiltrate anymore. Yes, I don't deny they would use the, the synths in general, but maybe they'll make them very distinguishable between, you know, a human and a synth so that, you know, it's not uh, something that's very confusing. And maybe, like, say, going back to, like, oh. um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Uh, I can't think of the name. I, uh, like iRobot, mm -hmm. like, like you have like the brand new ones that look very much like a human and then you have the previous generation that looks human like just so you can kind of like associate with it, mm -hmm. but can still do all the tasks that you need. So like have that AI, but differentiate them from a human enough so that you can be like, oh yeah, that's not a human. Yes, they might have AI, but it's controlled in some way. So like, yeah, you can send them all to a farm, do all the farming and then come back. And then it's just, there's no sentience and is that i don't know if that's the best way to put it but there's sure. no sentience to them saying like hey this could be a person no it's not it's a robot do you think that the the differentiation of their outward appearance would keep them from developing sentience i don't think it would stop it but it would make they would give people like humans a distinction of it it's like yes you might be able to like form feelings memories and all this other stuff but like it's just it's all code it's all you know you know it's just manufactured in like in by computers by you know it's just it's not true it's it's like it's just a way to differentiate like hey a human from a synth mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. it's it would just, help the human side of the equation yes more, right? and when it comes to the the railroad i don't think they'd need to be a thing because the synths are not being used as tools as a bad thing honestly it, it, they wouldn't be in this in this situation they wouldn't be used as a tool to infiltrate people or like need to be taken away from uh like the institute itself right right 
So, and going back to the Brotherhood, they just become the enemy. They just honestly, that's you, you it. You think that they just they have become, no no justification in this? They have situation. no justification. Like you see an organization trying to rebuild a destroyed country, and you're going to come in and say, "No, that's ours." No, you're a dictator. Yeah, right, right. You don't have the right that's, to do that. You in don't this situation. You, like. It's just like, right. why are you taking away something that start like changing and making the world better? Just because you think we can't handle it? No, we're handling it. Fi- they, they could be handling it fine enough to be running and sustaining life, but no, that, no, you just become a dictator and you're just cr- uh, creating more issues. Right, especially in this situation with the institute having designed their own technology. This exactly. wasn't this wasn't pre war technology that the um, Diamond City found and repurposed, which is typically the Brotherhood's mantra. This is technology that was developed over 200 years by the Institute, and Mm. they're the people who know how to use it. So in that situation, I think you're right. The Brotherhood has no say over this technology. It is a very different kind of thing. So I I think you're very right about that. Um, Back going back to the AI AI thing, I think it's an interesting topic. We actually just talked about a very similar topic on the Cyberpunk Lorecast, because one of the things we're doing on that show is we're going through cyberpunk, a list of cyberpunk movies with our patrons. And we just discussed Ghost in the Shell, the original 1995 anime. Have you guys Uh seen have you seen that movie? I have not. So one of the concepts in this movie is that there is an AI that develop sentience or claims to have developed sentience and it did so on the internet it didn't do so with a body it was code that emerged in in the net and it calls itself the taskmaster and it did so without a body and it was looking for a body to merge with in order to continue to evolve itself and in a similar way you could have sentient AI from the Institute evolve even without the body and Uh or or with a a body that doesn't that still looks like a Gen 1 synth, but yet the mind of of that AI is sentient. And so from the human perspective, it doesn't necessarily feel like a person, but from the AI's perspective, it thinks it's a person. I think that's kind of what I was trying to touch on with my explanation of it. But like, yeah, like looks not human, but everything else that goes on, if it does have, you know, if it's able to form feelings, attachments, memories, everything that comes with being, you know, like a human, I think that still can be possible. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's, it, it would still be a very distinct distinction between the two. Right. So, right. Well, because, here, I, I want to give, I want to give uh, Eric and, and Kit uh, a chance to chime in here too. But yeah, yes, yes yeah. I, I, absolutely. And that's, that's why I wanted to touch on that. Cause I think that's what, kind of where you're going with it. Um, Eric, Kit, do you guys have any thoughts on any of this stuff we touched on here? Either one of you. I was thinking that they would, if they were going with the morally upright thing as they devote to sentience, they would, probably just have them choose what they felt like doing allow them I mean, choice if, if yeah. it's a thinking machine that can make its own decisions it would develop preferences right right so if it said well i want to choose okay well what's your choice well i'm happy staying here working then you can stay here and work great or i want to leave and pick my own destiny well then i mean okay some would theoretically choose to defend the region just because of the fact that it may decide there's a justification for service towards others. Right. And uh, I think this is also an interesting thing too. Um, One of the concepts with AI and the development of AI is that oftentimes if given the choice, one of the theories is things will choose naturally the things that they already know how to do the things that they were designed to do because those things will be most comfortable so an ai that has been already taught how to say farm if given the choice will probably end up choosing still to farm because that's what it knows it may just want to be able to choose that rather than to be able to to have to be told to do it and there may be a distinction simply in being given the freedom of choice. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. It's, it's the difference between like, um, 
<laughs> I mean, how, how many of us have gone on to further education, whether that's college or trade skills or those kinds of things? But <laughs> there's a there's a big difference between being in high school and being told, well, you have to go to school, you have to go to class and being like, oh, I don't want to go to school. But then when you get to a point in your life where you're like, well, no, this is the thing I want to do. And then you end up working towards it and paying for it. And then you look forward to doing it. There's like yeah. simply because you made the choice, all of a sudden you actually like it and you want to go do it. But it's still learning. Mm -hmm. It's still education. <laughs> but simply because you made the choice, you want to go do it. It's, it's it's that little switch in your head that just gets flipped. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I follow along with that. So, some thoughts there. Yeah. Kit, Kit, do you have any thoughts on any of this? Mm, I mean... I mean, yeah, you know, just letting the sense choose their own path, you know, like, what was it? Like, Palo and Dance, well, okay, well, spoilers first on an old game. Sure, Palo sure. and Dance went... It is a lore cast. When it became... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, people still get mad, but anyways. Yeah. Became, you know, one with the Brotherhood. Then you have Magnolia, who's like a singer and now you know the eye candy of um the third, third whale and then you meet a raider called gabriel who got you know who met up with met up with the um with the uh rail, what was it railroad uh, yeah railroad and then became a raider yeah basically like different different walks of life you know one of them became a soldier one of them became a singer then one of them, one of them also became a um a raider so it's it's all really like just let them choose what they want to do with their freedom regardless if it's like uh, gonna be a negative or a positive outcome because no one is out there to choose you know who you're gonna be at all mm -hmm. yeah yeah i have to wonder how um the citizens of diamond city would feel about that because they are distinct from the institute in this situation hmm. you know how do they feel when they're farmers in their uh, the soldiers guarding their walls decide that they want to get up and do something different. Mm. That that is actually a good question. I think that is where an issue between citizens and the institute, or even just the institute in general, will surface. Because would the institute want their resources just to be like, "Hey, I don't want to be a part of this city. I want to go." Yeah. I don't think they'd be very willing to be like, oh, yeah, sure, you could go leave and, like, you know, like, leave us with less manpower or, or, and just, yeah, just be, be like, willing to give up whatever it makes, takes to make a synth. So, yeah, and the cost I, of it. I mean, each synth yeah. individually probably costs the equivalent of millions of dollars. Yeah. So, and uh, it's just one of those things of, like, I feel like, if since or if it, like you know like the sense might still have some aspect of control from or like the, the institute will have some aspect of control over the sense because they it's just one of it's i feel like they'd they be more of a tool honestly so that yes they might be able to interact with humans but like they still have that little bit of control because it's like why would you want to give something the choice to leave right right so yeah I th so maybe if, if when we really look at it maybe synths won't be synths they might just be straight up very advanced robots or maybe yeah maybe they de design the technology to limit the development of the ai to roadblock yes. it at a certain point where it stops developing yeah so i guess that's one way to look at it because like there's because if the way it seems like the synths in foil of war as as they are now they're meant as weapons of war in a sense because like they're wait they know how to infiltrate they know how to like they have tactics they have everything that they need yeah. but they still have no they have a goal and like they were they're told that goal so but then you get like the um, you know uh valentine and then you have paladin dance and everybody you know like the people that are meant to be like humans but like they don't know it's just like it's it's just a line of like i don't think they need that if they're being above board right right well and um tie fire asked the question uh, ethics are we still not assuming they're good guys and the you don't have to raise the question of are you making an ethical distinction if you don't develop the technology to the point where 
since become sentient to begin with. Like I'm not developing the technology so that my toaster develops a sense of self. There's no ethical d dilemma there, right? You have the new Vegas toaster. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like my computer I'm sitting at right now is not developing a sense of self. I am not actively programming it in a way where, where it will. Right. There's no dilemma in the fact that I'm not actively developing it in, in a way that it will. Uh -huh. So the fact that I'm choosing not to is not an ethical dilemma. They could simply choose not to. Right. So that could be that, that, that they could still be above board. They could still be yeah. just choose to develop robotics that do a process just like manufacturing a car or yeah. cupcakes, you know, like whatever. Uh, and, and just have robot advanced robotics that do a thing just like a, you know, a protectron or a Mr. Less, Handy. Less, less killing assault chants. <laughs> right. Right. And, and just go with that without actually yeah. developing synths. Yeah. 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 That's an interesting point. Uh, that's a cool way of looking at it. Well, guys, we need to take a break and thank you guys, our patrons. And before we get to that break, I want you thinking about the next question that we're going to come to, because at the beginning of fallout four, there is a dilemma. There is something that happens that is, initiated by the institute and of course spoilers but of course it's also a lore cast there there is a murder that happens the murder of your spouse and the kidnapping of your child and all of this is initiated by the institute so how would that change in this scenario and how would that change what the main character does what your character does in the game if this scenario were to play out. So I want you thinking about that, and we'll be right back. Hello there, old chap. Good to see another of General Atomic's finest still eager to serve. All right, this is the part of the show where I get to thank our patrons. So these guys and everyone else who takes the time and the finances to support the show. Thank you so much to all of you guys. This is what helps make this a full-time dream career for me, and I really do appreciate it. And also, thank you to Kit Calavera, who's on the show right now, for being our new patron. Welcome aboard. Thanks for being here. And um, thank you to all of our patrons, all of especially our Liberty Pie Man. Pie Man, I was hoping he was going to make it to the show tonight. Looks like things got a little bit busy for you, uh, but you might still pop in. Sometimes you join us by the end of the show. And also to Southern Rage and Stagger and Stumble, our Sentry Bots, and all of our 54 patrons. Thank you for being here. You guys are amazing. And as always, if we've done anything to help you get through your workday, your workout, your drive to work, or picking out the perfect Christmas tree. Because if you're listening to, you know, podcasts while well, you pick out your perfect Christmas tree and we went Christmas tree shopping just a few days ago, we found a Christmas tree that fits right next to our TV in our living room. And I was convinced that my wife had like this crazy idea that she was going to fit one in there and it was going to be too big. And then we found a skinny tree and it's like a five foot tall skinny tree and it fits. And so I had to eat crow. I was like, okay, that one will fit. We'll get it. We'll get one. We'll stick it right there and it'll be fine. And then we got a little one, put it on the table also. So we got two Christmas trees this year. <laughs> you know, tall skinny one. Well, kind of sort of tall skinny one. The, anyway, but if, if, if you listen to podcasts while picking out Christmas trees or whatever you're doing for the holiday season, then go to patreon.com slash fault lorecast. Check out all the different tiers. And man, there's all sorts of fun stuff in there. You can get t-shirts. You can join us on future episodes of the show, or you could just simply get ad free episodes and help support the show. And I would really appreciate it. And so thank you to all of our patrons. You guys are awesome. And we don't have any new reviews or anything like that to read out today. But if you also want to help us out sharing this podcast with a friend, or spending the time on, to go to Apple Podcasts, even if you don't listen on Apple Podcasts, and leave us a rating and review would help a ton because people read those and it lets them know what's what the show is all about. Especially if you're somebody who's who's still listening, like almost 200 episodes in, because we're getting really close to almost 200 episodes. Um, because we got a lot of people leaving reviews on the early episodes, but if you're still listening and one of our current listeners and want to let people know, hey, the show's still good, that would be really helpful. So. You know, taking the time to do that would be really, really appreciated. But uh, yeah, that's that's what we got going on. So thank you to all of our patrons. Let's get back to the rest of the show. Here we go. If you have any questions about Nuka World, I'd be delighted to answer them. All right, guys. So the beginning of the game, you get your kid taken away and your spouse killed. But what if what if that didn't happen? Or would it happen, but in a different way or by somebody else? Like, what do you, what do you think would happen here? 
Personally, I don't think it'd be an issue. But um, I kind of like... I'm just looking at the the chat. TIE Fighter. Mm-hmm. I kind of do like the way... That, you know, just as a story, I like how that is. But, like, if we're just saying, like, you know, the Institute 2 in general is just, like, above board from square one... I don't think the killing or the stealing of your son and or and the killing of your spouse is going to be an issue because like I like <clears throat> there's no need to get, break into the the vault and take them. So actually, you as a character might not even see the Commonwealth unless someone breaks in and just releases you properly. That's the other thing, right? So. That's my look at on it is just like it's either you your character just doesn't get released and the vault just stays everyone stays cryogenically frozen until the vault just kind of falls apart naturally. Do you think that you just w- wouldn't have ever been unfrozen? I don't think so. Well, because like there's there wouldn't be a reason to find leadership. Mm-hmm. So unless the institute knew about it, it was like okay, maybe we should you know release these people. They've been frozen for you know how long. Yeah. So it's more of an ethical thing of releasing you instead of like, hey, we need to find leadership, which is kind of a weird place to find it in my eyes. But right. still, well, they were looking for they were looking for somebody someone, who had pre-war genetics, like somebody who who wasn't post-war, like non irradiated, right? Non irradiated is what they were looking you. for, right? So what if they were still looking for somebody who was non irradiated? They go into the vault and they wake you up. And your family comes out, but they don't yeah. murder anybody. They don't steal anybody. But, yeah, no, it's but just you wake you're up. Welcomed. Right. You wake up. There's a squad from the Institute that wakes you up. You, you get uncryogenically frozen. You're like, oh, you're waking up from, you know, you're going through the whole cryogenic like wake up thing where you're like, oh, my God, I feel like I've been asleep for 200 years because you freaking have. And <laughs> and there are, there's a group of the Institute right there. And they're like, uh, hello, we're from the future. <laughs> <laughs> we we need your genes come with us where does it we go from there <laughs> oh yeah well also we need specifically your child more than you guys but yeah i mean i it's it's just one of those i just feel like it would be yeah pretty much everything fine it's just like hey like we need we need your genetics we need someone that's untainted by radiation yeah. we need your son yeah. but yeah. you can come back and you know like live in pretty much creature comforts past uh, like that's even past of like what your previous life was okay so, like, so let's pause okay. it here let's pause it here how would each of you respond to this like you yourself in this situation <laughs> you wake up 200 years into the future the cryogenic stuff is like opens up and the only people who come out from it is you and your, your spouse and your, your child. So for some reason, the rest of the vault has, has doesn't work. Malfunctioned. Right. It's malfunctioned. Like your, your chambers are the only ones that worked, right? You come out, some scientists are there and they're like, Hey, we unfroze you. You're lucky we did because nobody else even remembered that you were here. Also, we have an agenda, <laughs> right? Otherwise you would have been stuck here forever. Yeah. And we specifically need your child because you guys are pre-war. It's 200 years in the future. So uh, please come with us. I mean, what would you do? Oh, oh, and by the way, it's still a hellscape out here. There's lots of radiation. There's gigantic mutant mutant monsters, including super mutants and death claws. Uh, The Brotherhood's trying to kill us and steal our technology. And um, everyone's living basically in squalor. But we're trying to fix that because we're the good guys. You can trust us. Believe me, you can trust us. (laughs) I mean, I would go hesitantly being like, hey, I just woke up after a 200 year slumber. I'm going to have to take you at your word, but also just, and it's, so it's just like, I, I'd have to go because like, what, like I'm in, this, in a weird situation. Uh, and like, then they're like, okay, here, step over here. We're going to teleport you to our secret base. There you go. I just like, <laughs> I mean, it's just like seeing teleportation. I'm like, Hmm, they might be telling the truth because <laughs> what it's like, it's, yeah, 200 years in the future, like two years that, that long ago was like, we didn't have teleportation. Uh-huh. So, so just, you would be cool with it. You would be like, you look at, you look at your wife, right? 
and your child and you, you'd be like cool <laughs> What's the what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> because like it also they say is like hey there's all, also a wasteland um, that you'd have to contend with if you don't come with us. Uh-huh. So you'd be you wouldn't be like well let me just go peek outside to see what's going on out here. So I'd be like yeah no I'll, I'll go with you and then show me later. <laughs> okay so you'd you'd be on board with them you'd be like okay let let me go with okay so let's let's move on to Eric Eric what would you do in this situation? I hate to say I'd be on board with it too. I'd want to play with the future tech and tinker around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, and and remember, you don't know anything about Fallout in this scenario. You don't know anything about the post-apocalyptic world. All you know is you watched a bomb go off as you descended into a vault, and you, in your mind, the world above is just it's just blown apart. And you just got, last thing you remember is you got frozen, and you come out, and there's these people standing here telling you these crazy stories about. A world 200 years in the future and so and 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 i'm not trying to dissuade you i'm just painting the picture and you would just say yeah yeah show me show me your magical teleportation land i would still end up having going with them simply because of the fact that nuclear bomb went off likelihood of people surviving is not all that high these people are clearly healthy Uh so they're doing something correct and they weren't dirty so they're not surviving hard yeah, yeah, they would look pretty clean because they would have gotten, well, relatively clean, I would assume. Yeah. Okay. So you would say, yes, take me to your leader. <laughs> Basically. Though I also would then be going through everything I could for information because I would want to know where I stand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get where I could make informed decisions. That makes sense. Okay. Kid, what do you think? What would you do? Well, I mean... <laughs> You've been frozen for like 200 years and like all of a sudden you got like these sketchy looking people telling you like, hey, you know, you kind of need your child for genetics and all that. And plus uh, the world has gone to crap and I'll probably just tell him like, maybe give me a minute, give me a minute or two just to uh, (laughs) just think what's going on here. And, you know, after they tell me what's going on and all that. I'll probably just tell him, you know, hey, prove it to me. You know, prove me that you're not going <laughs> to backstab me or do some weird testing on me or my family. And if they just zap me back to their base, I'm like, eh, OK, I'll trust you for, for now, at least. <laughs> uh-huh. What could they do to prove to you that they are trustworthy? I don't know. I mean, like, I guess like um, show me what they're whole plan is i mean like clearly like um they're much cleaner than the rest of the um <laughs> wastelanders out there so, so would that you have them take that. you around yeah. and like show you some pla- some locations uh more more or less like their base of operations like telling me like you know this this is who we are this is what we're doing um we kind of we kind of need your child for this and if they tell me it's like not nah, not painful or anything i'll just say all right here you go <laughs> how do you have them prove to you what year it is like because for, mm. for all you know you could have just been frozen for a year and these people are from some weird faction and they've you know maybe they have some advanced technology you've never heard of you know maybe they're the chinese playing some military trick on you with some oh stealth technology like you you don't know right right like how do you how do you have them prove to you that it's it's actually 200 years in the future i mean show me a copy of the elder scrolls six i guess (laughs) (laughs) there you go that's it (laughs) here you go buddy here's the sixth installment and i'm like all right i believe you no Uh, (laughs) i mean i think teleportation is already enough it's like i mean assuming there wasn't teleportation back before the bombs dropped but but you may not have known that there was maybe there was and you just didn't know it you know oh, like yeah that's true you like know, you didn't know all the government. technology that was there yeah. there was secretive government stuff and you uh, technically if you were the male character you served in the military you probably right, came across right. some technology in the military you didn't know existed until you served you know there who knows I mean, if they just show me a death claw, it's like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> this didn't exist point. before I got in the vault. <laughs> no, it does not exist. I don't remember ha- seeing like a dinosaur outside of my lawn before, but yeah, or even yeah. <laughs> or even a super mutant. It's like, okay, we have we have the we have the Hulk, and then we have a dinosaur in the future. Uh-huh. I, I call me crazy, but I, at that point, I was just like, all right, I, I believe you. This is two hundred years later. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm thinking if if they were to like take me through Boston and show me some right. historic locations that look like they've been weathered for 200 years and the cityscape and how much has changed over 200 years with like the the buildings falling apart and people rebuilding on top of rebuilt like multiple layers of things that would give me a sense of age and maybe yeah, i mean i may not right. know 200 years has passed but you can definitely tell like uh if you've traveled at all you can kind of tell when like something's been around for 100 200 years it looks pretty pretty old Mm. right like old buildings old structures so to go to a, a historic location that you knew what it looked like something you were familiar with having lived in the boston area and then see it again and be like okay yeah this definitely has weathered considerably compared to the last time i was here this has been much more yeah. than a year <laughs> since you know i've been to this location i think that might give me a sense of of time passing oh yeah absolutely Especially maybe if someone is confused, uh, baseball for a gladiatorial like yeah. death fight or something. Yeah, the conversation with people, um, yeah, the way yeah. they use language, that could even be a thing. Oh yeah, honestly, the best way to to solve this, talk to a ghoul. Yes, find a ghoul, talk to a ghoul. Yeah. So, because then they, if as they'd be able to tell you, like, yeah, it's been that long. So, and also <laughs> just true. looking at looking at them it's just like there's no way someone could would put themselves through this to like prove a situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so right yeah you're kind of right there yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's an well, interesting dilemma okay so let's take this another step further the institute has convinced you they seem to have they seem to be above board right they're they're pretty legit they they're going to treat your family well they want to use, you know, the data that they've collected, the genetics and things from from your family, specifically your child, uh, for for good reasons, for whatever their their scientific goals are to help better the wasteland and, and help people survive, including your family. And then what do you do? You're you are allowed to go about your lives. You don't necessarily have this like agenda the way you do in at the beginning of fall four you know find your son deal with the situation that you're presented with in the same way right you just have this like deal with the world situation and in this scenario like this is your choice this is like this is lil green's choice this is eric's choice this is kid's choice like where do you go from this point on <laughs> Hmm. just tunker down at that point you just build a family like build a life for yourself like we you build a family you have a family but you build like a, a home yes. yeah just re reset again just you know 200 years later it's like okay i lost basically everything yeah. except for the family do you, do you, you start, start farming from do you like do you fall back on your military background because that's the character that you are in, in the game do you do you start working for the institute do you start you know, like, what do you think you you guys would do specifically? Hmm. I would want help with the rebuilding. You'd start working with the rebuilding. You'd probably go to Diamond City and get your hands dirty, that kind of thing. Yeah, I've done contracting work off and on for years and like welding metal structures together is fun. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so you you'd you'd start in with that. You'd you'd use the technology in your in your knowledge to do the re work with the rebuilding effort yeah that makes sense okay okay what about kit what do you think mm, trying to think here because i don't have much skills but we'll just say that you, but know, you could learn something base. like you, you, yeah. the, the world is open to you the institute has a wealth of knowledge the commonwealth has a wealth of knowledge about how to survive in this situation you could mentor underneath somebody and and start learning a new path I guess you're right. Uh, oh, God. Um, also, I guess the Brotherhood is trying to steal all your stuff. The Railroad might be yeah. might be trying to free the synths if there's synths around. There's super mutants trying yeah. to shoot everybody and raiders out there. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of things that need doing. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, at that, at that point, I would just be a guard then if I need to defend, you know, the settlement. You just give me a railway rifle and just tell me who to point it at and I'll be set for 
<laughs> yeah, until I take a bullet. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a that's a real need. There would definitely be a need for people to oh, do yeah. that. How how do you feel you would stand up to say a wandering band of super mutants? Like when you if you saw a twelve foot tall <laughs> super mutant running at the front gate, going, "Let me in." Me, me take all your Brahmin meat hungry, you know, like <laughs> how, how would you feel about that with your railway rifle? Do you think you'd be able to be like, I got this? Or would you be like, you know, dropping a deuce in your pants? Like, what should, <laughs> which one of those? Where, where on the spectrum would you be? I think in that specific situation, if it's the first time I'd be like, what the heck? And then, you know. <laughs> be able to like be like okay this is some sort of threat say like i'm out wandering exploring the wasteland and that was to happen yeah i'd shit my pants <laughs> yeah right like <laughs> because uh, like i don't have like that barrier of the fence is like okay he, he has something to get through before he gets to me and mm-hmm. i have you know i'm i'm armed no matter what like if i'm don't have that gate even if i'm armed with like the strongest weapon you could give me i'm gonna crap my pants yeah that dude bounds and pounds in on the date gate is gonna like shake <laughs> the entire wall like you're gonna feel it yeah but you know if i'm at diamond city there's more than just me there mm-hmm. so yeah it's the other like, guards oh, on the wall are all, are all gonna start shooting at him too absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah they're just gonna sigh and then you know like take the pot shots you need to to take them down but then it'd be like, oh yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, <laughs> I those have someone guys, there to be like, this is the a thing head. you have to worry about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, aim for the head. Try to keep them from actually reaching the wall. <laughs> and if you see one with a growing, glowing red light, kill him first. Yeah, kill him first. <laughs> yeah, Kit, what do you think? How do you, how would you respond? <laughs> I guess I would have to bite the bullet there. Just you know, point and shoot. Like um, like how Green mentioned, there's more than me. There's more guards out there. <laughs> Uh, just and just point the gun at the um, guy that's glowing and you'll be fine but that will change once the brotherhood starts knocking you know if they yeah. want to invade it right after uh, th- you know at, at that point i'll just i'll just you know turn around and just say oh well they won yeah they that's won. a lot a lot smarter of a threat <laughs> That's a lot oh, yeah, more, more smarter than a bunch of like, you know, muscle and no brain compared to like ironclad soldiers. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So. All right. Lil, what do you think? Where would you go? I think I'd stick to my laurels as a military person and either do defense or try and maybe like expand the borders a little bit. Be like, all right, going around to like the, the other smaller settlements and be like, hey, we're this organization. We're trying to rebuild. Do you want to join us? And then, but so just trying to spread the message and be on board defensive and protection side of things i guess because like it's something i already know how to do i don't want to learn how to do something else so why not do what i'm good at interesting you know as a photographer you could probably still do some of that i wonder would you would you document things visually oh yeah i mean all right if i'm doing my if it was me personally yes i would probably say like hey is there any way i could use my skills as a photographer because like there's a lot you could like documents and like keep track of and just be and just try and use it as a visual tool to be like this is what we're doing yeah and like just be because like you know like it's a lot of people in the wasteland are probably uneducated they're not gonna be able to like understand things so using visual tools is the best thing you could do honestly so yeah, yeah a lot of a lot of documenting things visually using yeah. pictures uh, could be very helpful to people, especially people who have a hard time getting places because mm. it's dangerous, you know, like being like reconnaissance, even yeah. like using photography for reconnaissance reasons yeah. could be very useful. Yeah. Interesting stuff, guys. Well, we're getting to the end of the show. This has been a really cool conversation because this is these kinds of things always go places where you don't always know where they're going to go until you kind of talk it all out. And it's mm. neat to have all our minds thinking about this because it really fleshes things out. I, I'm sure that th- the more I do this, that this is kind of what it's like being in the design meetings for these games before they actually get into the actual development of the games. This is like the early meetings where they're thinking about like, here's the setting, here are some of the the characters, here are some of the factions, here's potentially what the storyline's gonna be like. This is maybe where things go. 
you know, and, and so we're kind of doing what might be some of that early design work in a sense. Do you guys feel like maybe that's kind of what happens? No, I mean, yeah. I could see it being a thing because, like, it's just all the stuff that happens in the games. Like, you do need to brainstorm it, so you can't just be like one person like talking about it. You need to have a group discussion to be like, well, what if this happens? And like, you get three different answers. It's like, okay, what's the best one? Yeah. Or if people yeah. if people think of the same thing, it's like, okay, maybe that's like a good path to go down, or maybe it's not. Right. Right. Because so. somebody else can say, well, what about this? Or somebody else, somebody else brings up, well, what would the what would the brotherhood do in this situation? You're like, oh yeah, the brotherhood or you know like it's really cool because you get you get the collective brain thing going on which is or those fun. three answers become different paths for the quest exactly, yes yeah. exactly yeah three three mm-hmm. different ways to solve the thing because three different people came up with different variations that's it, it's so cool guys so thank you for joining me for this episode this has been a lot of fun yeah, um, I, I really enjoyed this yeah so um i hope you guys come back next month and uh do this again and anybody else who wants to join us next month remember that you can always sign up or if you are currently a tier four or higher patron you can always join us as well and um guys we're going to wrap this up by going back through and feel free to share ways that people can get a hold of you but also things that you're working on if there's anything else that you're doing that you want to share that people can kind of check out if you're creating content or something else that's going on and we'll go back through everybody um so lil is there anything going on or ways people can reach out um, I really don't have anything personally going on because of the holidays, but, um, you could reach out to me on discord. Just make sure if you want to reach out and talk to me, just ping me. I'll get to it. Eventually I check discord every so often throughout the day. But, um, if you want to see, you know, check out any of my photography, you can look me up on Instagram. That's the best way at a uh, little green underscore photography. Awesome. And you can see my work that I put out every so often. Yeah. And feel free to share that on the discord too. And the, the whole, oh, yes. Uh, I forgot promote I your do stuff. That. Yeah. And we've got a whole promote yourself section. So I, I'd love to see your art on there. Right. Anybody else who wants to do art too. We had somebody, uh, uh, one of our, one of the people who jumps in my uh, morning streams, draw my character from Skyrim. And they did a sketch of uh, her, her name's spider. She's sneaky stabby. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Vio, uh, one of our, our friends in our community. Uh, but yeah, I would love to see your art. I love, I love whenever anybody makes stuff. So please share that on the discord. I want to yes. see your stuff. It, it, especially people who are talented at things that I'm not, <laughs> I, I, I really appreciate that stuff. So please share it. Um, so th- thank you for joining us, Eric, how can people reach you? And is there anything going on? Um, uh, mostly on, the, uh, check the discord occasionally because I'm almost always working, but I'm on there under Eric strange, uh, Aside from that, between holidays and work, all my side stuff is cornered for the moment. But trying to get back into artwork and writing and developing tabletop games. Very cool. Very, very cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining again. And then, Kit, thank you for joining us. Is there anything going on? And how can people reach you? Well, I'm always on the Discord, always lurking or sometimes posting. You can, you know, contact me anytime you want. I have no life at all. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I'm just working on um, trying to get some uploads going on my own channel, uh, trying to provide more content for the uh, 76 community. That's not just uh, news and all that. Awesome. Awesome. What's your channel? Uh, same as <clears throat> same Kit Calavera, uh, 09, well, 09, I mean, so awesome. Kit, K-A-L-A-V-E-R, 09. Awesome. Yeah, go check that out. And guys, thank you for joining me. Everybody, you know where to reach my stuff and all the different shows on the network. So all the robots radio shows, all the um, Rocket Club shows, we've got that that continues to grow. So if you're looking to start your own podcast and you want to uh, join the network, be associated with the network and be part of our mentor program, there's the Robots Radio Rocket Club. We meet every week. You can check all that stuff out at robotsradio.net. And if you're interested in starting your own podcast, but you're not ready to sign up for something like the Rocket Club, but you still want to learn a bunch of stuff, there's the the uh, video game podcasting book I put out. It's available at robotsradio.net slash book. I took all the knowledge that's in my head, everything that I've learned over 20 years of working on stuff, and put it into a book and it's all there for you so that you don't have to take 20 years to learn everything and make all the mistakes I made to get your podcast kicked off so that maybe you can turn that into a career as well. So you can go check that out. And I'm creating a bunch of videos on the Robots Radio YouTube channel. So you can always go there as well or join me for the morning streams where I've been playing Skyrim and modding the crap out of it 
Uh, everybody says that Skyrim doesn't work for mods with Anniversary Edition because it broke up a lot of stuff, but that's not completely true because I am modding it to look like a next-gen game with the mods that do work, and I'm going to have a new video up on that very soon, but I've been playing in the mornings and we've been having a blast. So um, come join us in the community, hanging out in the mornings on the Robots Radio YouTube channel. And other than that, that's uh, we'll see you next week for another Fallout Lorecast. And so stay safe in the wasteland. And until next time... Maybe be above board and just help the wasteland get better <laughs> so that everybody can live happier. Wouldn't that be wonderful if we lived in a world where everybody just like, you know, work together so that maybe we could all have nice things and be happy. And man, that would be awesome. But anyway, we can dream. We can, we can dream. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you for being here. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. See you later. Peace. To plug into everything else we're doing, check out robotsradio.net. Also, look up the Robots Radio YouTube for videos about Fallout and other things. And check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash robotsradio. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.